Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Cornerstone's Great American Hymn Sing. Yay. We're so glad that you could be with us today. We're here to sing the old hymns of the faith. I don't know whether you grew up with the hymns or not. We're so blessed to have Dean and Mary Brown here as Absolutely. our leaders. Yay. So blessed. Yay. Hallelujah. Well, you are indeed, and we're, we're glad that you were able to be with us. Terry, you grew up in the hymns, and they're very special. Oh, yes, they are. I mean, ever since I was a, a young girl, my sister and I, we always went and sang in choirs and choruses, and those hymns, they just last with you forever. It's amazing. Well, the hymns, the hymns are a combination of beautiful music, but also the doctrine of the church. Well, and, the, and scripture verses. The scripture in the know? church. And, and mm -hmm. Norma, you, you love the hymns, too. Do you have a favorite? Well, I, I have a lot of favorites. But I really love All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Oh, yes. And I, could we sing it again? Let's, let's finish it. Would you yes, all like to sing great. another verse? Oh, yes, yeah, let's do it. That's great. Woohoo! Okay. Ye chosen seat, you ready? Here we go. Ye chosen seat of Israel's race. nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I know that we have all built from time to time on something that is not stable. And anybody that's as old as me knows that there's a lot <laughs> of unstable. <laughs> there's a lot of, I know you're not, but uh, there's a lot of unstable things out there, a lot of uh, things that we put our hope in and our trust in, and it fails us. But Jesus is the rock that we can trust and everybody in this room and in your room said amen. aloud amen right. my hope is built come on let's sing it together my hope is built
Can we sing the very last verse? Sure. I love it. It's pretty exciting, I think. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, pressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the Son. You know, the, the word says in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 19th verse, speaking one to another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture that tells us how we are to act and how we are to rejoice. Absolutely. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to sing and, and worship and praise God for all that he's done. You don't have to look very far in your life to find something that you can praise God for. Absolutely. Right? Just look close at what God's doing in your life. These hymns have stood the test of time, Terry. They sure have. They sure have. They've been around a long time, and when we hear them, they always stir up in me mm -hmm. the truth of the gospel. Oh, absolutely. And you absolutely. know, there's stories behind a lot of the hymns. Every hymn is breathed of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. John Newton was born in London, July 24, 1725. He was the son of a merchant ship commander. Newton knew little of his sea captain father because he was always away. His mother was a Christian, but she died when he was only seven years old. At the age of 11, mm. he went and became part of his father's crew on his ship. But only five years later, when the ship was in port, Newton was kidnapped and mm. pressed into labor on a British man of war ship. They used to do that. They'd capture and put him into labor. He was then traded mm. to become a servant of a violent African slave trader. Mm, so Eventually, funny. Newton escaped. He described himself as a wretch. Others around him said that he was just a very wild person. But on a trip back to England on his own slave ship mm -hmm. that got stuck in a very terrible storm, he remembered his mom's prayers. Mm. And he repented and cried out to God. Even though he was saved, he continued to be the captain of a slave ship until the inhumane treatment really started to convict him he left the sea in 1755. He went on then and studied to become a minister, mm -hmm. and he preached until he was 80 years old. Mm -hmm. When his mm -hmm. eyesight and his health began to fail, his friends said he should stop preaching. And this is a quote from him. He said, shall the old African blasphemer stop while I can still yet speak? Mm -hmm. Among his many hymns, Amazing Grace mm -hmm. is his personal story of God's love and mercy. Uh, Let's sing. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Mm. Amazing Grace. Oh. 
I've got one, Dean. I've got one. 
How about leaning on the everlasting well, arm? Let you have that first verse, buddy. <laughs> Get up here. Yeah. Keep walking, brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this would be good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Leaning on the everlasting arm. I'm telling you, people are about to get saved if we let him sing. They're going to say there is a God. <laughs> Jesus is real. He's Lord. All right. <laughs> All right. Leaning on the everlasting arms. That was Steve's uh, big thought. Mary, what do you think? <laughs> Did you sing this in church, Steve? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, didn't you, why didn't you do it today? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about I'll move my mouth and you do the singing? <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. What a fellowship, what a joy we might be. Highlights of the hymn sing, brother. <laughs> Highlight of the hymn sing. Well, another story mm -hmm. about the hymns. And you're going to know this hymn. It's one of my favorite hymns. Uh, it was written by Eliza Edmonds Hewitt. Eliza was born in June 28, 1851 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right down the road from us. She graduated valedictorian at the local girls' normal school, and she began working as a school teacher then. A lot of women in those days were teachers. But then came the misery in her life. Just as a young woman, as a, as a teacher, her career shrieked to a halt when she was forced into bed. She was bedridden with spinal injury, a wow, spinal pain. what happened? Well, what happened was one of her students hit her with a piece of slate and apparently oh hurt her, permanently hurt her back. She was confined to the bed. And, you know, in that kind of situation, she could have been bitter. Oh, yes, definitely. She, she could have just blamed mm -hmm. God, blamed everybody, because a young mm -hmm. woman, she was restricted to the bed. Instead, she studied English and literature and learned how to write, and, and music came out of that. Wow. Later, her health did improve so she mm -hmm. could get up and move around a little bit. And, and she went back to teaching, but she had relapses in her, for so her back. So she still had pain. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all of her life she was mm -hmm. suffering because mm -hmm. of that, that injury as a young woman. Uh, but despite those health problems, okay. she was deeply committed to being a teacher and working in Sunday school and working with kids. And okay. at one point, she even taught a class of over 200 oh. students. So that, as a, as a mm -hmm. woman who's fa facing handicaps, Eliza wrote many hymns, including More About Jesus, Somebody Else Needs a Blessing, Stepping in the Light, mm -hmm. Sunshine, and mm -hmm. Victory in Jesus. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus tonight. You know, I remember, I remember that song from just as a boy singing that at church, singing Victory in Jesus, and how it would make me just kind of clap my hands and sing along. So is it, could we do that? Could we, could we sing Eliza's song, Victory in Jesus? Yeah, Absolutely. we can, because you're the boss. Oh, no, brother. <laughs> when it comes to this, you're the boss. Okay, if I'm the boss, then this is the way we do it down in Memphis. Okay. We're from Memphis. I'm going to do the first verse, okay. and then y'all are going to come in on the chorus, and okay. this is called 
flying by the seat of your britches on live TV. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. I heard a old, old story. Yes, Lord. How an angel came. He came from glory. How he made the lame to walk. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won. us again, fill each heart with thy love. I've heard preachers praying on TV and everywhere we go for revival. And we need to find that revival spirit and uh, pray that it's reaching into your home with some of these old hymns as we sing them right now. Do you remember Revive Us Again? Oh, yeah. Let's start with the chorus of that. Yeah. Ready? Oh, let's have revival. Come on, right now. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm the glory. Hallelujah.
Amen. 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 Yes. That's right. Rumbling. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Just singing along makes uh, my spirit rumble. I'll tell you what. We go to Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis. It's a big old Baptist church. Probably thousands and thousands of people. And they sing a lot of this contemporary music, which is wonderful. I, I like it. Don't think we don't like it. We like it. But I'm going to tell you something. When, when oh, for a thousand tongues begins to be sung, in the midst of that, I feel like I could run. And they don't like that at that church. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I feel. They start to sing, oh, for right. a thousand tongues oh, to yeah. sing praises. Unto you, Lord, praise you, Lord, Amen. that, that Amen. you've delivered us from all the stuff. I'm not going to ask you what you've been delivered from, but I'm looking at you. <laughs> Cancer and, and 45 years of marriage. Five of them were good, I think, weren't they, Mary? 45 years of marriage, and that's not something we need deliverance of, but I'll tell you what, it wasn't all good. But, but just as we praise him and as you worship him. Amen right where you are. I know that that revival will come into your home and will come into your Amen. heart as we begin Try to worship God Lord. together on this great old hymn of the church. Absolutely. Can we sing? Thank you, Lord. On the first. Come on, let's worship him in this. I feel his presence. I, I'm sorry. I just feel God. Amen. You know, Dean, I'm thinking that maybe a lot of you people at home, you've got a hymn book. Run find that hymn book. And more than likely, this song's going to be in there. Oh, for a thousand tongues. Just think, if you had, I, there's so many times when I'm with, alone with the Lord, I just wish I had more hands <laughs> to raise. I wish I had song. more tongues. I wish I had more vocabulary yeah. to sing my praise to the Lord. Don't you feel that way, Don? Amen, sister. Amen. Norma, don't you feel that way when you're just alone with the Lord? You wish you had more, more, more yeah. in the presence of the Lord. Can somebody just praise him now in this place? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glory of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. He breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the bridge. Well, but let's try. Oh. Let's continue singing the doxology. Yeah. Could we sing the doxology? Well, you know, that's, that's what we usually do at the end. We're not quite through. Is that okay that we do it now? <laughs> All right, Jim, you're going to have to sing. I heard you sing earlier. 
appreciate the presence and the spirits of the individuals, uh, the faces that are in this room. And I appreciate you wherever you are. And we can praise God from whom all blessings flow, all creatures here below, above you, heavenly host, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jim, help me sing. Come on, let's sing it together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. big idea. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Dean, praise isn't really an option. Praise is a privilege. You know, sometimes life has got a lot of tra tragedies. We all face obstacles in life. Sometimes those obstacles are pretty, uh, pretty serious. But it's in the middle of the obstacles. It's in the middle of those adversities, those trials, those challenges. James says that we're going to find joy. We're going to count it all joy. And so how do you count joy when you're facing things that you can't control? Really, that's the bottom line, isn't it? Yeah. When you can't control it, it's out of your power. That's and not the easy time. Though. That's the hard time. <laughs> but that's the time for praise. Yeah. That's the time for praise. And maybe at home, you're, you're facing something in your life that's out of your control. Maybe a sickness, maybe a relationship that has issues in it that you can't fix. Maybe it's in your own family that you can't do anything about it. That's the time to praise. That's the time to lift up the name of Jesus. If you, if you lift him up, the Bible says he'll draw all men Hallelujah. unto himself. You know? right. Hallelujah. And so what, what you need to do and what I need to do in these times of difficulty <coughs> and in the times of ease. That's right. It's easy to praise God when things are going good, oh, Norma. But when, it, money. when things are tough, that's the time that we need to praise. And, you know, these, these hymns come from lives that are real people, real life. And the, the next person I want to talk to you about is Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby had some adversity in her life. She had to praise God in times that were really difficult. What it would be like for you if you were blind? Imagine. Just imagine what it would be like if you were blind. Fanny was born in Putnam County, New York in March 24, 1820. Uh, Fanny lost her sight during a, it was really during a fever. It was tragic. When she was six weeks old, they put a hot poultice on her eyes, and that poultice actually destroyed her optic nerve. So as a baby, she was her, her, her vision was destroyed because of that. She never learned how to read by raised letters. All she ever learned, she memorized from hearing it. Mm, that's amazing. She never had any training, any schooling. She was 44 years old before she wrote her very first hymn. Mm. 44 years old. Wow. And, then, and then she became one of the most mm. prolific poets and songwriters in American and, well, world history, really. Absolutely. She wrote over 8,000. 
8,000 hymns. That's amazing. 8,000 And she started hymns. at 44. She started at age 44. Gosh. And and remember, blind. Mm -hmm. Blind. And never learned how to read, never learned how to write. What an amazing gift she yeah. has. She learned mm -hmm. just by listening, by memorization. Uh, most of those songs were written in the silence after midnight. She liked to go into her room after midnight when everything was quiet and then meditate and listen to the Lord. And that's where she wrote most of her songs. She wrote songs like, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, and To God Be the Glory, Jesus is Tenderly Calling, and Blessed Assurance. Amen. Once a minister told her, I'm so sad that God never blessed you with the gift of sight. And she immediately said to him, if I had been given a choice at birth, I would have asked him to make me blind. For when I get to heaven, the first face that I will see is the one who died for me. Hmm. Let's sing. She wrote Blessed Assurance. Can, let's, let's sing Blessed Assurance. Mm -hmm. And as we sing this, if you're facing those kinds of challenges mm -hmm. in your life, why don't you just praise God and listen to the words mm -hmm. that Fanny wrote in the middle of her adversity about the one that saves her. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my
Yeah. 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 Oh, my goodness. Do you remember, Dean, about, oh, my goodness, I can't imagine how many years ago it was, but we had a, uh, one of our earlier recordings, um, maybe 35 years ago, we had an album called To God Be the Glory, and it's the old hymn of the church. Yep. And uh, we had an album called this, and... Um, we didn't know it we then, and we don't know it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did know it then, because we sang it almost every night for several years. You know, when you, put, when you quit doing something, sometimes you just forget. But it's good to bring these old songs back to your memory. And Terry, were you saying something over there, girl? Oh, I love the song. It was written by Fanny Crosby, too. Wow. I know. But she's one of the great songwriters. In, uh, she in 8,000 hymns. Yeah. Wow. 8,000 hymns. I mean... Yes. I mean, I can't, that's, uh, in, in, you can't comprehend that. That's a lot of songs. Wow. Well, I'd love to get on the TV royal as all that. Dean, this is supposed to be spiritual. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll slip away sometimes. To God be the glory. You remember it now? I remember it now, yeah. Y'all ready? Come on, help us. To God. mention a song. One of my very favorite hymns growing up I love is Holy, Holy, Holy. I just love that song. That just brings me into worship. So let's sing it. Holy, Holy, Holy. Mm. He is holy, isn't he? He, he sure is. is. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Holy, Holy,
You know, if you prayed that prayer just a moment ago, you've accepted Christ. Come on, let's praise him because he's worthy. How great thou art. On the chorus, everybody sing. Then sings my soul. Oh. 